Hello and welcome to this week's Modern Toy Fair News, the weekly show that talks about toys. My name is Michael and with me this week once again, the founder of Media Junkie, the only Wes Smith. How are you this week, Wes? Hey buddy, I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a good week for toys. Yeah, it has been a good week. It really has. So if you are new to the show and you don't tune in regularly, first off, shame on you. Uh, Second, the way it works is we break down the news I deem worthy of the hour of your life and we talk about what we bought this week and send you on your way. So let's go ahead and get right into it. First up, pretty much as always at this point, we have the McFarland Toys Power Hour of the show. Uh, We got images of the, well, more images of the Witcher 7-ish line. So we've got Geralt, Eredin, and the 12-inch Geralt. And these all should be up for pre-order here soon and then released later in March. Now, we did see the Walmart exclusive gold label one, but these are like the normal release ones that will be coming soon. And they give you like a better look at what accessories they come with. So I'm not going to lie. I don't, I'm not a Witcher fan, but that, that 7-inch version with like the severed head is pretty badass. Yeah, I'm not a Witcher fan either, but I, I'm not going to lie. I don't even know this guy's name, but the guy with like the the rib cage. Oh, yeah, the like armored up guy. Probably like a bad guy or mm-hmm. right. He looks sweet. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. As as my group of friends know, I played the game for a couple hours, fell from a flight of stairs that was three feet tall and died and was like, well, I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> so I, I've put uh, zero minutes into the Witcher games. So awesome. Well, I I have to assume we'll be just buying these all up then. <laughs> all of them. I'm going to own all of them. Uh, so keeping on the McFarland train, we did get more news for the Warhammer 40k figures. There's going to be three of them. And I'm pr- going to warn you now, I'm not a 40k guy, so I'm probably going to butcher these names as well. We have the Blood Angels Hellblaster with a artist proof variant. And then we have an artist proof variant of the Adepta Soritias Battle Sister. Uh, there's no pre-orders or release dates yet. Uh, they they look cool, and they seem to be going real deep into these artist proofs because this is the third. You know, well, they did one, and now they're doing two more. So I'm just curious: Are 40k fans super into the idea of getting seven inch figures of what they're doing because the whole purpose is they buy these little like inch tall dudes and paint them and like have war on a giant table. Yeah. I feel like you killed it with the names, by the way, you did a good job. Oh, thank you. Cause my, my second day read or second grade le- reading level, uh, definitely, uh, struggled through that. You did better reading their names than you, you did saying that sentence just now. So. Uh, yeah. I, I stumble at <laughs> stumble real bad. <laughs> Uh, I mean, these like, guys are cool was, looking. Yeah, but I mean, they're they're cool looking. Just I, again, I've, I've never played Warhammer, so like it doesn't connect with me. I mean, I've watched people play Warhammer because back when I used to play Magic, I there were the card shop I went to. I think it was like Wednesday nights. They had like a bunch of middle aged dudes who would come in and they'd set up tables and they'd play Warhammer. And I was like, oh, this looks really cool. And they're like, oh yeah, you have to buy these little miniature miniature, ah, miniature figurines and paint them. I'm like, well, you lost me at paint them because I can't paint at I all paint let alone paint a wall <laughs> yeah I, i've gotten yelled at when i've helped paint walls so like wow this looks terrible i have to repaint this and i'm like well mm-hmm. my bad <laughs> it's like when i was younger and i used to mow the lawn and do a shitty job on purpose just so my dad wouldn't make me mow the lawn <laughs> maybe that's why i'm really bad at painting because i used to do a shitty job on purpose but now i physically can't do it i think i fucked myself i mean yeah, I, yeah that does make sense I, question I mean, for you on this warhammer toy mm-hmm Maybe you don't know. Maybe the Warhammer community knows. Maybe they can let you know in the comments. But like you get someone who has, you know, this giant armor on them, has a helmet on, you know, armor on the arms, belts with like grenades and pouches and shit. What's with like the loincloth? What the the fuck's that going to do? Well, from what I at least from what I remember seeing. It seemed very much like a, a mixture of like medieval times meets Lord of the Rings. Oh. Or not, well, that those are kind of the same things. Um, but it meets like, uh, because like they, I'm pretty sure they have like swords that are like chainsaws and shit. So like, like it's like modernized, like it's instead of it being all just strictly like knights in armor and, and stuff like that, like it's, it's kind of like a upgraded version. Like if they moved into 
the industrial area era without like fully going the way that history went like steampunky in a way kind of yeah without all the cogs everywhere let's see what they're hiding under that cloth though i mean probably a very large chainsaw (laughs) 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 moving on to more mcfarland news we did get more looks at the Mortal Kombat 11 variants for the 7-inch figures. We, so we've got the bloody variant of Raiden. A... I can't remember. He, was, uh, he had a weird name. I think it was like Ice Warrior Sub-Zero or something. I'd have to relook it up. Sure uh, bloody right. Baraka and Bloody Spawn. These should be hitting stores very soon based on the fact that we are even seeing some inbox photos start to pop up. They look great. So I don't collect Mortal Kombat toys, although I probably should have collected the Scorpion and Sub-Zero just because they looked great. Mm -hmm. But Baraka is my favorite Mortal Kombat character. I've always loved Baraka, and I think his toy looks great. I wish he didn't have that bloody mouth, but I get it. You know, I'd rather have a normal version you could always get. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. These are the bloody variants, right? Mm -hmm. But I like the blood on him. I just don't. The bloody mouth looks like he's wearing like Joker lipstick. (laughs) And but the spawn though, you gotta let me know if you find that spawn because I oh, need yeah. that spawn. That that spawn is pretty sweet. Me and Jamar have talked about this because they've shown these off a few times, and the spawn with that white and red just really pops. And then I I like Baraka just because he comes with a, he comes with a brain that can slide onto his his like wrist blade. <laughs> I mean Spike I'm gonna get thing. Baraka just because he's my favorite mm-hmm. little comic character, so I, I gotta get him. Raiden he looks great. You know that white suit with the red wraps really pops like it's a great looking figure but i was never a big raiden fan mm-hmm. um the other one it, I, I thought it was rain at first but it, it, i see the uh skull with the spine attached so it's got to be sub-zero some form of sub-zero right it was yeah it was like ice warrior it's, it's one of his different costumes that are part of like the dlcs and stuff looks great um we've talked about it four or five times and i because he's not bloody like the rest of the set i just instantly i like, can't remember what it was <laughs> Yeah, no, it's that, that's a McFarland's been releasing a lot of shit lately. Uh, yeah, man, they, they're their factories must just be like on all cylinders at this point. Cause they have between the DC lines, you've got mm-hmm. this, you've got other video game lines that they're releasing figures for, and they're all consistently hitting stores on a regular basis. So it's not like they're going and waiting eight months in between shipments or anything like that, like a lot, a lot of other lines are. Todd McFarlane's just down there at like the factory. Like now, come on guys. I need a third house Make more <laughs> figures. Now I got to go draw spawn, you know, J- jokes on us. He doesn't need it from there. He- he's already getting like a third and fourth house from his spawn uh, Kickstarter. He did. Oh my God. For the, is he, did he do one for the movie? No, he did it no. for, he has a figure that he did a Kickstarter for with reach goals and each and essentially it kept growing, so they just kept adding rage goals until it got so, like you're gonna literally gonna get like a suitcase full of shit from Spawn um, <laughs> once this thing's all done, and like the money he's got to be raking in from that has to be just in- insane. That's insane that he started a Kickstarter for that. Like he didn't have money. Yeah, I don't, so here's the thing. I think he he did it like shortly after. Or well, maybe it was like a year or so after the uh, the sand barge from Star Wars came out from Haslab, where it was like yeah. Jabba's like floating palace, and I think that's what made him do it. He's like, well, I don't have my own like retailer website, so I'll just use Kickstarter, and it worked for All him because right. he a lot of people signed up for it. Regret not getting it. So there's that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure it'll be pretty easily to find on eBay because a lot of people were pissed when they found out that the uh, the figure has zero like ab crunch and he's like oh. at this weird angle. So he's like constantly like leaned back all like, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So they finally got like um, not the, the production samples came in and they took like, a picture of everything that was coming with it. And the first thing people noticed is his abdomen is all one piece. So it has like you can it has a ball joint at the hips. So you can still like yeah. shift him like around. But he has zero like where like his rib cage is nothing. So you can't like 
bend him over. You can't like twist it so he's not at an angle. And a lot of people were pretty pissed. I like how I act like I give a shit, but even though when I would get it, I wouldn't open it. So <laughs> you just have a suitcase full of spawn in the corner. It's just a suitcase of spawn. People are like, what is that? I'm like, that's my spawn case. <laughs> Uh, so wrapping up the news for McFarland this week, we do have some photos of in hand looks for the two pack with the new 52 Nightwing and Red Hood seven inch figures from the DC multiverse line. Pre-orders are supposed to go up in December, at least the last time they announced anything. But with now they're showing up in hand, that could change because theoretically that means they should be close to being released. So I guess stay tuned to see if there's more news on that. I will say I still think McFarlane's version of Nightwing looks like dog shit, but the Red Hood is yep. is pretty badass. Yeah, it's not so, actually that's what I was gonna say. I think that Red Hood is badass and would look great on anyone's shelf, but the Nightwing, yeah, that one's lacking. Also, I always preferred the blue suit. Well, so Nightwing. here's the thing: he did a blue version in a normal oh. line, mm. but the problem is like the proportions are all wonky because it still used that like forty eight point articulation nonsense that he was doing so like he almost had like orangutan arms <laughs> and his head was a little bit too small and it just it looks so bad and they're essentially just repainting that red to do the 52 version hmm. and, and even me as someone who's just like nightwing everything i'm just like this this figure's just too bad for me to justify it but i'm not gonna lie that red hood is gonna sell this two-pack because that head sculpt alone is incredible mm-hmm. and people are going to want to use that to put on their like customs for like Mezco or storm collectibles or whatever they're working on. Yeah. I'd get it for that. I'd get it for just for the red hood. Yeah. And I, I will, I do find it interesting though, which it doesn't surprise me because it's McFarlane, but so red hoods costume normally like he's got like, he still has the black vest or like a dark gray vest, but usually his pants are the opposite color of whatever his vest is. So like, he has a black vest. His pants are like dark mm-hmm. gray and you know, vice versa and sometimes his pants are like brown and and stuff so i find it interesting that he just went all black i don't know if that was just a we don't want to have to pay for more paint deco or if he just I, really likes black i prefer the all black to be honest with you i think that makes the figure look really sharp it does look nice uh it it just i don't know it, it was something that definitely caught me off guard because i'm like wait usually he has like brown or like yeah. tan or dark gray pants but caught me off guard because he has a literal butt crack well, yeah, that was a little weird. Like carved right in there. It is. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just like, out of the two characters here who people have me- made memes about their ass, like, the one who is not who you think it would be because like Nightwing, he's just got this like gently sculpted butt cheeks, but nope, mm-hmm. you've got that hard butt crack going for uh, <laughs> Wedgie is, McGee Red Hood. That is straight like wiping area, man. It's disgusting oh man yeah I, I see a lot of people using that in their figure photography to to mm-hmm. giving him wedgies and <laughs> stupid <laughs> shit <laughs> uh so ending the mcfarland power hour and going over to jazzwares jeremy padauer himself showed off some of the new production work for the aew unrivaled wave 2 you have dustin rhodes mjf hangman page ray phoenix Penta L0M and John Moxley. MGF will get a 1 of 1000 chase and John Moxley will get the 1 of 500 chase. Uh, don't bother trying to hunt those at stores because if anything Wave 1 has taught us is that they will just show up on Ringside Collectibles website for 100 to $200 or more. Uh, and you'll never see them at a Walmart shelf. Uh, so there's and, no chase. Yeah, so yeah, the whole right now there's a whole shit show in the wrestling community which actually caused me to stop collecting wrestling figures altogether just because the community is basically cannibalizing it on themselves where the the Jericho and Cody Rhodes chase, there was no reports of anyone finding them in Walmart and Walmart has not had any stock of them since the end of August when they hit shelves. So it's not like they're actively getting more shipments in to where it's like, okay, there's a replenishment. Maybe they'll, we'll find them. However, ringside collectibles has given away several, and now has sold a handful, we don't know exactly how many, of both on their website for basically scalper prices, which, I mean, ended up being below scalper prices because it raised the price of scalper prices once they bought them. Um, So some people are 
are being like, oh, well, you know, it's part of the game, blah, blah, blah. And some people are like, well, it's bullshit because, you know, they paid 10 to $15 for these figures from the manufacturer and they're selling them for 100 to 200 and they're a retailer. But apparently now they're just a specialty shop and can do whatever the fuck they want. So what about the second hand, like eBay? Like once people get it from that retailer that's scalping them, do they go up mm-hmm. from there or is it still much? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's skyrocketing from there because essentially they, sent, say they set the president because usually you'll see the like, people willing to pay five to ten times for like a, a chase with this kind of limit, limitation of what it's worth. And basically when that would be if they paid $20 at retail. So you'd be looking at like 100 to $200. Yeah. Well, yeah. in this case, the Jerichos have already gotten in hand for some people. Uh, Cody just went up uh, last night or the night before. And Jericho, the last one I saw, was still had bidding left was at $600. Wrestling fans. Come yeah. on, guys. It's not worth it. Like, don't. Don't don't give in to these people. Yeah. I mean, in, in their defense, realistically, at this point, this is the only way they ever get this figure, because despite that, there's still people claiming, oh, no, you'll find them on shelves. Give it time. First off, there's only a thousand of one, 500 of the other. And, you know, at least 10 percent of those were kept back to be given away to talent and workers and so on and so forth. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and they ship them out for free for people to review them. Yeah, so the idea that, oh, yeah, you just hold out, you'll find it on the shelf. No, you're not. So if you if you are a completist and this is your, like, one thing you collect, you're pretty much SOL. You either drop six, oh, fucking one month's rent or you uh, oh my God. just give up one, on the line. One month's rent? Where do these people live? I would like to live there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Well, maybe I have to assume that you know it's the most places aren't as terrible as far as like cost of living as they are where we live. Yeah, more likely. Um, but yeah, so the the wrestling figure like society, like completely in disarray, and people are fighting with each other nonstop, and it's it's pretty much to the point where they're at that like Funko level of just just garbage drama. <laughs> I get it. Uh, so moving on to a much better and more impressive line of figures from Jazzwares. They announced the Slushy Soldier from their Fortnite line. He comes with a shotgun, SMG, sniper rifle, shield potion, ice pickaxe, and reef back bling. He already shows out of stock on Walmart's website. However, that he could just be a placeholder because I haven't heard anything about orders actually going up. Uh, and there's also no ship date list- listed, so I have to assume that they don't know when he's coming out yet. But they keep showing off these figures, and they just look so cool, and it makes me almost wish we never stopped playing Fortnite, but then I realize, remember how awful it was. Yeah, it's because Bloom sucks. Change that shit, Fortnite, I'd play your game. If you if shooting actually made sense, I'd play it more often. Do you know anyone that actually collects the Fortnite toys? Um... Do I know anyone personally? No, but yeah. I know there's like a couple, a couple other YouTubers who like they don't play Fortnite, but they collect some of the weird characters. Like, um, there's one who just collects the food based ones because they have like the hamburger boss and uh, they have yeah. the hot dog and the banana, and he just thinks it's the funniest shit ever, so he collects those. But I don't know anyone so that, who like actively yeah. like plays Fortnite and collects the figures. So then we have to think that these are made for kids right because kids love fortnite that's like their biggest base why do they have 40 points of articulation like kids don't need that when i was a kid i had like three parts of points of articulation it's like oh the legs move cool i think it's also because they they have multiple lines so they do have a smaller version that are like three and three quarter inch that actually also have like the the bus and the little like uh Remember that ball, the gyrosphere thing that you could yeah, travel around in? I they do. had they have made those. I've seen those in stores. So they have a smaller line that's more like kid oriented. And I think these were meant for collectors and they, they do sell well. So I'm not going to lie. I'll see them on the shelves one week and the next week they're cleared out. Um, I just 
I, I personally don't know any who collects them because they're a Fortnite fan and not just because, oh, these are really cool and I can use them for other things. Because a lot of them are pretty simplistic where you can use them with your G.I. Joes, your X-Men, your Batman yeah. villains, so on and so forth. I do, I do think that one looks cool, the Slushy Soldier. Right? It's hard I, to say. Right? <laughs> I was, given how much I've just screwed up throughout this, like, first 20 minutes of the episode, I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. just trip like, over this name. <laughs> I had to slow down mentally to say it. It's so <laughs> weird. Uh, so next up, we do have Mattel announced new Jurassic World Amber collection figures. We are getting the Delta Velociraptor, which is available through Amazon, and the Echo Velociraptor, and that is listed on Target's website. So Target does show out of stock, but again, could be just a placeholder because... I haven't seen anyone like actively complaining that it sold out. Um, I know you mentioned before the show that you think you saw one of them at Target. Yeah, no, I did see one of them at Target because I picked it up and you know I showed Noah and he said he wants to dig through a little bit later and see which one it was. It's got to be the orange one though. I mean, if that's the Target one, I, I would just uh, yeah, I would assume. But I'll be buying them. I'll be buying them. I'm Noah not gonna lie I, for Christmas. So. I'm looking, I look at them and I'm like, the articulation almost sells it on me where I want to get one of them or maybe like two of the same one to have them in a display because you could actually like pose them versus like, do you remember the Jurassic Park toys in the 90s? Yeah, oh my God, they were amazing. They were like super cool, but they were, weren't very easy to pose because they, they only, their legs only kind of like moved one way. Yeah. They didn't have like the side split and their arms didn't really move much. Um, and I feel like these are just a night and day difference. I'm like, man, it's like if if kid me is getting everything that adult me would actually want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they uh, they didn't have very many points of articulation as far as those dinosaurs and they still sell for a ton of money. So Jurassic Park toys hold their value. Yeah, man. Di- dinosaurs may have died in real life, but not in the toy world. <laughs> uh, so moving on to, from Mattel. We have the not so NYCC Mezco announcement where they start off their Mezco Con Fall Edition with pre orders on the Bodega Box Hazard Squad Gomez. Now, this one's going to be a long one. So, of course, he's packed with a bunch of price increasing merch that we didn't ask for because that's just how the con exclusives go over at Mezco nowadays. Uh, you're going to get the Hazard Squad Gomez and his blue turtleneck, interchangeable hands wrist gauntlet with grappling hook, zip line, and uh, HUD hologram attachments, the G1 Cosmic Pea Shooter, a machete, a cable jack for the wrist gauntlet, two grenades, a third antenna, boom 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 box, two alternative heads, two pigeons, yes, that's right, I said pigeons, <laughs> grappling hook with rope, a chest full of weapons, which are a two assault rifles, two pistols, two laser pistols, and a BFG, Another machete, smoke grenades, another more retro looking grappling, a wooden Rumble Society mini baseball bat replica, a Stinkle crew mezzet, a 112 scale pizza pie with, from the Sucker Punch Pizzeria, a Mezco Grubway token, a Hazard Squad Commander Gomez sticker, and a Gomez Friends with Window. Uh, Gomez with friends window cling. And you also do get a comic and there the box itself does unfold into like a mini base of operations diorama. Uh this this all this was for the low low price of $150 and it sold out pretty much instantly. Uh it did? Yeah, it was it was pretty much within I th- the only reason why it even lasted I think like 10 or 15 10 or 15 minutes is because the site had some issues and like crashed a little bit, but yeah, it was, it was gone in less than an hour. Oh, excuse my ignorance here, but what is it? So Mezco had their mascot is this like weird roach named Gomez. And for a while, Mezco solely focused on like movies, DC and Marvel figures. And then that's, that's the Mezco I know. Yeah, and then they did a long time ago make their mascot, but he was super limited, and people didn't really seem to care that much. 
Well, then they came out with Agent Gomez, where he was just in like a suit and tie and came with a bunch of cool accessories. And people ate it up because there's three different people who buy this figure. There are the people who simply want to sell it because it's going to go for a lot of money. People who actually like the Gomez character. And then there's people who customize and just want all the accessories and the body and the normal clothes that aren't superhero clothes to make other things. Yeah. And that's pretty much what fuels the never ending Gomez train. Cause at this point they've made, I want to say seven or eight, maybe more different versions of Gomez. Um, huh. And like, I, 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 I'm on, I'm on, I'm the last one. I, I would buy this solely for the accessories and to have a base body to use for like just a cool secret agent dude like get a normal mm. head and pop it on there um well this would fit in as a villain if you were doing some kind of diorama like he'd fit with the turtles oh yeah you could definitely use him with the turtles that, that that's actually a pretty smart idea um but yeah the the thing that people aren't liking is when they first started doing the gomez figures it's like oh it comes with a comic and like be a pin and it's a little more expensive then it became oh you get a t-shirt and then now it's you get all this other garbage that you don't want you get everything so yeah congratulations like like literally these are 80 dollar figures that we're now paying 100 dollars, 150 dollars for because they want to give us a bunch of con merch that we don't have any desire to have hey you get that single crew mezits congratulations yeah so i'm not gonna lie i pre-ordered mine i'll probably yeah, sell you did? yeah <laughs> You can order everything, man. I, I I probably will end up selling the heads and all of the extra crap that isn't actually action figure based to recoup some of my money. But I was like, okay, most of the stuff is pretty badass, and I, I definitely could have use for it. What what the I, heads fit on? No, do I, would they fit on anything I have? Um. No. Theoretically, oh, wow. I know that they're close to the size of like the Marvel Legends peg. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For the most part, you can pretty much take any head you want, and like I have a Dremel, you can Dremel it out and put some poster tech in there, and it'll fit on anybody you want it to. Um, but scale wise, they scale off the Marvel Legends probably the like best for things that you'd mm -hmm. use. Well, all right. Uh, so. Moving on from my terrible life choices with money, we have the <laughs> <laughs> absolute winner of this week's news, and that is a new line of Barnyard Commandos coming from Premium DNA and Megalopolis Toys. They are available for pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store. I've already pre-ordered them, and these yeah. things are absolutely incredible. We have the Rebel Army of the Militant Sheep, or Rams, and the platoon of rebel killer swine, or the porks. <laughs> the wave is split up into two of each. You get Sergeant Wooly Pullover, who comes with a backpack, a Gatling gun, a compound bow, three arrows, a milk quiver, a bandolier with removable egg grenades, and two sets of interchangeable hooves for gripping accessories. You get Major Legger Mutton, with posable backpack missile launcher system, a missile, uh, a missile, a whole watermelon, and a damaged watermelon. There's Corporal High on High on the Hog rocket, or High on the Hog. He comes for rocket launcher, removable missiles, satellite readouts, a tire, a rusty axle to make the rocket launcher freestanding, and a bayonet. Uh, then finally, the last one in the set is Private Side O Bacon. He has a backpack, a flamethrower, detachable flame effect, safety goggles, hay bale, and you can get these guys for thirty six ninety nine each, and they ship in the what? second quarter, <laughs> second quarter of twenty twenty one. Thirty seven. You paid thirty seven dollars each for these, Michael. Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> I'm gonna have to come there. I'm gonna have to come to where you live. I gotta sit you down and have a. Hey, you can't look at these and not tell me like you want to talk about things that would go great with the turtles you can't tell me these don't look like they could be straight up turtle villains 
Yeah, I tell you what, that uh, missile, it's gonna looks like a penis is gonna look great with your toys. <laughs> look look at that missile. Tell me that's not a dick. I mean, I I personally don't look at missiles and instantly see a dick, uh, but they are very phallic shaped, I have to give you that. I, I was just looking at the pictures you uploaded and I said, that looks disgusting. I mean, it, like, only you know, because the ring of the, the red it. tip with the ring around it. That's the only yeah, reason that missile the looks ring like around it. Oh my god. <laughs> there, I can't, I had no idea there were going to be that much money. I mean, it's not, like a, it's not a lot of money by any means, but mm-hmm. But it is, but it is right for well, something so, that. So here's there. the thing: like, if you look, at, they're fully articulated. Like, they're not just like chintzy little statues. Like, they have what looks like their elbow joints, shoulder, hip, head, and ab- abdomen, like joints, along with all of those accessories. I was expecting them to at least be thirty. So thirty-seven yeah. wasn't that far off from what I was expecting when I read the article. If they made. Ninja Turtle adventure toys that look like the characters from the comics. There was this Ninja Turtle Adventures special. They used to they did like nine of them. They came out like the summer, the fall, the winter. And there was one actually where they were drawn really goofy, and the bad guys in it were a ram and a sheep. So they would work really well if there were toys that look like you know the turtles in that mm-hmm. comic book. Now, which I wish they would make some comic book figures. But those two would definitely work. Yeah, I just I saw these and instantly I was just like, this is hilarious. And ju- just like I first I was like, well, maybe I'll just get the sheep because the sheep is probably the best one between the, the arrow and the quiver made from the milk can and the egg bandolier. But then I was like, well, I can't just have him. I have to have someone to fight for him or fight with. So I was like, oh, I'll get one of the pigs. I dig the I, pig. Yeah. With the missile then, launcher. Uh, yeah, so I was like, okay, but then I was just like, well, at that point, the ram's pretty cool too, and I was like, I can't get the ram and have them outnumbered, so I just turned it all four very quickly. Buddy, oh buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that that's the that's honestly my favorite story of the, of the week. Like, <laughs> though they're, they're just. I honestly, I'm surprised you didn't like him because I, I was go- looking at this. I'm like, oh man, Wes is gonna eat this up because he loves the weird shit. I mean, I like this the pig with the missile launcher with the nose ring. That's like mm-hmm. the one that I do like out of it. Thirty seven dollars for this I for mean, this little can... this little piggy. <laughs> this little piggy. Yeah. Well, this little piggy got to go to the market, Wes. Go to the market with a missile launcher. Exactly. At least they're not phallic shaped like this ram one. Yeah, the ram. The more you pointed out, the more that ram's pistol or that pistol, <laughs> penis missile, uh, definitely stands out. I, I really hope that when you know you post this online, anytime we mention penis missile, you put the picture back up. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever gonna if I'm gonna mention penis missile that often though. I, I meant on this episode, not future. Oh, episode, okay, not future. One. Okay, so like penis missile again, boom picture. Oh, okay, you want me? Okay, I, I might be able to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> So moving on from weird ram penis missiles, um, (laughs) Hasbro has announced pre-orders are going up. If you're watching this when when the video goes up today on 1016, the Star Wars Vintage Collection Boba Fett figure featuring premium detail and designs inspired by the Star Wars Return of the Jedi movie. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, It's it's a three and the three quarter line, though, but that would go perfect if you're a backer of the HasLab Razor Crest, which actually just got another reach goal, getting four individually sculpted bounty targets encased in carbonite that can hang in the ship's hull, just like it does in the show. The project is now over 11k backers and will continue pre-orders until November 9th, so you still have a little over a half a month to back this if you decide you want it. and. It's still so cool, but I just have nowhere to put it, and I can't justify that that price tag. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's awesome, and super happy for anyone that was able to buy it. I just can't fathom the price tag. Like, I can't, I would, inst- I would buy that, and as soon as I got here, I'd be like, oh, great, instant buyer's remorse. Well, my buyer's remorse is just because I, one, I don't really collect Star Wars figures anymore, and two, I, I don't have anywhere to put 
a giant ship that's probably the size of my desk. Like, yeah, it's it's gonna be a big boy. Like maybe if I trusted my ceiling enough, I I you know hang it from the ceiling. My luck, it would tumble within a couple nights, and I'd come in and be in half, and I'd be like, well, there goes three hundred and sixty bucks. <laughs> so it's uh, going to our last piece of news, though. This one I think will actually excite you, unlike the barnyard brigade. <laughs> Uh, Storm Collectibles teased a uh, image of what people are saying will be the main man himself, Lobo's Space Hog. That's for sure what it is. I mean, it, I mean, it's got to be. If you look at the, cause there's a picture for comparison of what his his bike looks like. There's a picture of what they posted. It's it's a it's a thousand percent got to be that. My only question is. Is it sold separately or do you get a variant version of Lobo from the Injustice game? I'm hoping you get a, a variant version of Lobo. I, you know this. That's why you mentioned that I'd be excited for it. I love Lobo and I could totally go for an Injustice Lobo toy. Yeah. So, I mean, so here's my question, because Storm, yeah. Storm Collectibles, they ain't they, they go to the market hard. So you, the normal Lobo. I'm pretty sure went for I want to say sixty or seventy bucks retail. Mm -hmm. So if you throw in the bike, you're probably pushing like one fifty. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be like to like Star Wars, you know, Razor Crest level? Can't justify the price, or because it's Lobo, you're going to be like thumbs up. Let's do this. So like I said earlier, I get really bad buyer's remorse. So <laughs> I, uh, it's very hard for me to actually physically pull the trigger on things. Um, cause every time I do, I get like this weird feeling in my stomach. I'm like, ah, buyer's remorse. Ah, not again. So <laughs> will I buy it? No. Will I want it? Yes. All right. I was yeah. going to say, well, I was, I was going to say if you buy it and then just regret it, I'll just buy it off of you then and just save, <laughs> save my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would just get a Lobo figure. Like if McFarlane, did McFarlane ever release a Lobo figure? Um, not yet to my knowledge. I have to assume he'll come to it eventually because like Lobo is the one DC character who I feel like would fit right in with Spawn and, and the rest of his like aesthetic that he obs obsesses over. Yeah, I mean, you could do DC or you could even do the Injustice one. I mean, it fits with both. Mm -hmm. I th I wonder if. I don't know, I, he'd probably have to do DC just because I have to assume in Storm Collectibles probably has the license for the Injustice line as a whole, because I haven't seen very many other like companies doing Injustice figures. But who knows? DC made at and maybe like we don't care. Just make us money off of this, this stupid DC property we own that we didn't want when we bought Warner Brothers. <laughs> if yeah, but if McFarlane released a little figure, I'd be all over that because I find their value to be just a you know yeah like 20 30 bucks buck. like for what yeah. you get with articulation and detail with mcfarland mm -hmm. figures is is pretty damn good like the storm collectibles is just for like the people like me who want something that's really cool and you can pose in crazy positions and do like cool figure photography with and yeah. and realistically if you're not doing all of that then save your money and buy a, a mcfarland figure um which still pose really well and still look really great it's just Storm collectibles, they find ways to like hide the articulation really well. So no matter how you have it posed, usually it still looks really like. See yeah, that's good. I, I would I would like a nice Lobo toy because all the toys I've seen for Lobo have been not very good. Yeah, I remember the disappointment when I showed you the uh, the bloody Funko Pop that they did. <laughs> so that actually wraps up the news for the week. And that means we're moving on to weekly purchases. And I don't know about you, Wes, but I had a pretty decent week, which all really accumulated in the last two days. <laughs> I, uh, I did not, but I, I mean, I did buy some stuff. We're, well, we're, I will go first. Yeah, do I'm it. I'll start back. with my cousin who lives here in town with me. I actually found this at GameStop and I was like, oh shit, I need that. So then he went back after he left and picked it up for me. But the retro Kingpin from Marvel oh, Legends nice. came out yes. finally. And I, I opened it in a way that I didn't ruin the card. So that way I can still keep that because it just looks so pretty. Mm -hmm. um, lucky for me, it was heavy duty. Like it's double cardboarded, unlike normal figures because he's oh, yeah. such a big figure. I mean, look at that. That's a big boy you're holding right oh, there. Oh, yeah, he was hefty. He was bigger than my hand. That um, card's got to be thick. It was thick. Like and him. 
<laughs> and even even Jake was very very much surprised. He's like, "Are you sure this is the figure you're talking about? Because he's huge." I'm like, "Yeah, he he was technically a bit built a figure a few waves back." <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's Kingpin. Of course, he's gonna be huge. He better be. Yeah. So staying with Marvel Legends, that's pretty much my entire week purchases of Marvel Legends. So I went to Walmart today, and I found essentially the entire build a figure wave for the Venom pole figure. So I picked up Morbius. Ooh. I picked up Phage. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. I've got. I like that Venom pull. So you're gonna build. You're gonna open it and build it. Wait for it. I've got. Oh, oh shit. I've got Carnage. <laughs> I've got Venomized Miles Morales. That's awesome. A lot of people were shitting on these figures when they were released or announced. Yeah, I think people are just tired of, of Venomized everything, because that's been Marvel's yeah. kind of go-to for like when Funko Pops and in the Legends line for a hot minute. I, I personally like it. I, I do, too. Honestly, my favorite in the entire like set is... is I, I Her real name, in my opinion, is Gwenom, because that's what it was before Disney stepped in. It was like, that's not marketable, so it's Venomized Ghost Spider. Uh, I like Gwenom. And then, of course, when you buy those five, I didn't buy the movie Venom, just I didn't really care for the movie. Um, you get to build this beefy boy. Yeah, that's awesome. The Venom pull figure. And that's so worth it. Yeah, it, it's a thousand percent worth it. And the fact I didn't know his swords actually came out of the sheath. I thought they were stationary. And then I pulled one out and I'm like, oh, damn, that actually like you can pose him with it. And that made it a thousand times better. But I, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep all of the figures i might sell a couple of them to recoup some of my money because i really don't care about all of them but i know i'm for sure keeping gwenum in maybe carnage so yeah those are those are probably the two that I would keep i like the idea of the miles morales one but i don't remember liking that figure yeah i mean it's it's cool yeah the idea i like the idea a lot but, but yeah it's, it's definitely like i i I don't dive deep in the marble legends line like essentially it comes down to what the if the build a figure is something i really want Usually that'll get me to to like dive deep for just that line, but yeah. I usually like one offs. Like usually, I mostly for the build of figures because they're usually characters that you're never gonna see in other lines because of how big they are. Yeah. So that 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 wraps up my my week of purchases. Well, I'll, get, I'll get mine before we move to that. It was the green. Oh shit, the green one. It's in stock at my Target right now. Oh well, damn. So apparently it's not exclusive to Amazon, despite. What the internet has told me. That or they accidentally got one. So I uh, I told Sarah we should probably go buy that just in case. Yeah. All right. So as far as buying stuff for the week, you can pretty much call mine cl the clearance corner because <laughs> I like it. I only bought these because they were clearance down to just absurd prices. Um, so for the first one, I don't I don't really buy video game figures. Like I don't have God of War toys, although I would love to own the NECA God of War ones, but every time I find oh, them, yeah. I just don't pull the trigger on it. I don't know why. Same thing for like last of us and tomb Raider. I would do it. I, I would, I would love to have them, but I just don't pull the trigger. I'm like, again, buyer's remorse, but this <laughs> is my favorite character from call of duty. And it was on clearance for like four fifty. So I picked up a McFarlane ghost. $4 though. Honestly, until you sent me that picture of that, I completely forgot that those were even like a thing. Because I remember those hit like Game Stops when the game first came out. Yeah, but they did not sell well, which makes sense why you were able to find it for like five bucks. Oh my gosh! Yeah, which I mean, I'm I would buy any toy on the shelf. If it was four fifty, especially if it's McFarland toys. I mean, it's because they look great. They got they look gritty. I like that. As I just throw it on the ground. <laughs> just doesn't like it that much four dollars so <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one i found for 450 and i was way more excited about it because he was uh one of my favorite characters and you know some of the best games that are out there uh, but i got this seven inch claptrap oh very nice for four dollars and claptrap is great and i'm very excited about this i thought so about opening it but the box is absurdly large so does he like, is he articulated or is he more of like a figurine where he's a statue? I think he's more of a statue. Let's find out. 
as I just fumble through this. All right. Yeah, he's definitely just a statue. That still looks really cool, though. I like the yeah. I like the fact that he's got like that kind of like flat paint deco instead of it being all molded. It definitely looks more like the the game. Yeah, I agree. It looks cell shaded and it, it looks great. It feels great. It's not very heavy. For four dollars, I couldn't pass it up. Like yeah, they had I, other Borderlands figures, uh, but I dug into the back of it and he was the last one sitting there. Good pickup. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad week. That's it for Clearance Corner. Hey, man, we've got Clearance <laughs> Corner and we've got what's in Jamar's cart. Like, I've got all segments for days <laughs> here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So that wraps up weekly purchases. And I'm going to remind you, as per usual, about our giveaway. Once we hit 350 YouTube subscribers, we will give away a first place prize of the NECA Ultimate Metalhead figure and a second place prize of the extra large NECA musical mutagen tour box bundle, which includes the extra large t-shirt tote bag souvenir ticket backstage pass and four guitar picks. So again, it's real simple. All you have to do is share or retweet the post from either our Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag modern toy fair 100 and then subscribe to the channel. Not that hard. I mean, we're all definitely making progress. We're, we hit 60 subscribers yesterday. So that's that's compared to where we were when we first started this whole uh, contest thing. That's an improvement. So keep it up. Like I always say, share it. If you've already shared it, share it again. Make sure you get as many eyes on it as possible. Because even if people don't necessarily share or retweet things, if they just subscribe on your behalf, it gives you more chances to win. Because there's less people who actually enter. So just get us there as far as I'm concerned. Find, you, you do you of how you want to get, do it. And, and of course. Get a bunch of accounts. Yeah. Get your, get your grandma to, to subscribe. I don't care. <laughs> um, and again, the reason why it's Modern Toy for 150 is because the contest started off at 100 subscribers. With just the, the shirt bundle. And then we managed to pick up an extra metal head for the contest. So we spiced it up a little bit. So go share or retweet that and make sure if you're on Instagram, share it to your damn page. If you share it to your story, it disappears in 24 hours and I can't find that shit. And I ain't going to save a bunch of screenshots. So if you, if you do that and you don't get entered in the contest, that's on you, not on me. I've said it almost every episode. So my, my hands are clean. But that's going to be it for this week's Modern Toy Fair news. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Jamar can be found over at Why Are You a Gamer? on Media Junkie, where essentially he sits down with different people in the gaming community and finds out why they like video games. Fun little conversation. It's pretty much timeless because each episode is individualized, so you can start at any point and go back and listen. I know he's currently on hiatus because he did just have his first child, so he'll be coming back here in a couple months, but he has a huge backlog you can go to, so make sure to check that out. And then you can also find me over at Media Junkie on the Gimmick Minute Wrestling Podcast, where me, Jason, and Kevin shoot the shit for one to three hours about what's going on in the world of wrestling. <laughs> uh, so if you enjoy wrestling and enjoy three idiots making dick jokes about wrestling, then we're your podcast. <laughs> or missile dick jokes. Uh, yes, of course. Picture. Penis missile. <laughs> if you would like to support the channel, there's a link below for tpublic.com where I sell shirts of our logos on them. There's also pillows, masks, phone cases, all sorts of stuff. If you click the little blue link, this is Wall Personality Comics. It takes you to my store. I have tons of other stuff I've worked up in Photoshop. Check that out. I appreciate you. As always, make sure to like and subscribe. Also comment because it helps the algorithm and pushes the videos out, gets more eyes on the product, and then of course gets more subscribers, which wins, gets you a better chance at winning shit for our giveaway. So go do your thing. And if you enjoy our faces, Make sure to hit the little bell to get notified when videos go up. We have Modern Toy Fair news on Fridays and Modern Toy Fair reviews on Mondays. If you don't enjoy staring at our beautiful faces, though, we do have an audio-only version of Modern Toy Fair news available on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Spotify, and other podcast apps you know and love. So make sure to check that out, and we will see you next week, same toy time, same Toy Fair channel. Thank you for watching.